I'm here with Marg, who uh, is a master of all things chutneys and relish. And today she's going to show us how to make date and apple chutney, one of her uh, favourite ones. Yes. You want to let us know what's involved here? Yes, we have um, 500 grams of dates, uh, six onions, eight or ten garlic cloves, depending on how you like it, about uh, 10 centimetres of um, fresh ginger, um, three tablespoons of curry powder, kilo of sugar, and two kilos of apples, and a litre of brown vinegar. Okay, and just brown, we can't use white vinegar? Not use white vinegar, no. It's better to have a fuller flavoured vinegar. Okay, no worries. So where do we get started? Um, you can chop some onions up if you like. Uh, well, your I've already, already got started and I'll start early, on the yeah? Alright, they need to that. be chopped quite finely. Okay, and all this, does it matter how roughly I chop it? Because it's all going to cook down, It's all going it? to cook down, so it all goes into the pot, except for the sugar at this stage, that goes in later. So just nice and rough then? Yep. So this used to just be a hobby for you, how did it become a, a job all of a sudden? Well we planted an olive grove and uh, when, they started, when the olives started producing we had oil and we had olives and we thought we'd better start selling them. So we uh, went off to a few local markets and we thought well not much to sell, we might as well make some other things. And all of a sudden I had a full blown business. Yeah and so yeah. What's, the, what's the difference for like, people at home that make these things, how do they move from that into actually selling them? Um, you just into actually selling them? Well, if you can go along to a farmer's market or uh, any local markets and you pay a stall fee, yep. um, you need to get your kitchen registered with your local council. Is that but quite easy? Or? That is quite easy. It's, you know, standard hygiene requirements. Um, they'll come and inspect it once a year. Okay. Um, but there's nothing very difficult about getting your kitchen registered. Um, and from then on, you can, as long as you obey the labelling laws, put nutritional panels on your jars, etc. These um, are pretty rude onions you've got here. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you gave me That's this job. That's why I gave you that job. <laughs> Maybe I should have pre-peeled a couple more. <laughs> okay, Sorry so the, with that, all yeah. the correct labelling and... Yes. And do you sort of have to, um, you know, research into preservatives and things like that to make sure it's safe? You or? do. Um, most... Uh, chutneys and relishes have quite a lot of vinegar and quite a lot of sugar, both of which are preservatives. So, um, and you need to research on what your best before date might be, but that's all available off government websites. Okay. Um, so it's not it's not very hard to. Uh, I've done these ones. You already. chopped those pretty quickly. Oh, I did those already. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a head start on you. <laughs> So everything's just nice and rough though with this one. Yes, it, cool. it cooks down very easily. Um, and what other uh, sort of preserves and things do you like making? Um, well, it's all seasonal, so that's why everything at the moment has apples in it, because yeah. we have hundreds of kilos of apples. As we uh, saw earlier. As you saw yeah. earlier. Well, I remember a few years ago, my, my head chef used to make us listen to ABC Radio, and uh, there was a lady on there that grew bananas in Essendon with, with a bit of success. So you can grow these unusual things in the city? You can. We tried years and years ago to grow bananas in the eastern suburbs. Um, the tree flourished, but I don't think we got any bananas. They're, they're like a the palm end. tree, aren't they? Yeah, they're long, strappy leaf. Okay. Mm. Oh, well, banana leaves, you know, they That's look it, right, don't yeah. they? Good for <laughs> cooking, lovely for, as a plate. I don't think I've used them yet. I think I may have used them as a plate. We used to do that. That's about all we got off it, yeah. I think. <laughs> Well, it's beautiful to cook fish and things in them, though. It's yes. like um, when you cook en papillot, you know, in, yep. in foil and in, paper, but yep. in the banana leaf seems to, if nothing else, it gives it a good look, authentic look. And is, is en papillot the same as... Cartuccio? En cru? Is that in pastry? No, no, no. En cru, en cru is, I think, in crust. I'm sure, I'm yeah, sure I will find crust, out if baby. it's not. <laughs> but en papillot is uh, in paper. It's because they used to cook it, the uh, the fish in, in the newspapers and things. Ah, the original yeah, fish but, and chips. Fish. But now we uh, do it in foil and baking paper and things like that. Right. But that's a beautiful way of cooking things. Steaming Keep, and roasting at the same time. Keeps all the flavour in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's absolutely beautiful. And and normally if you do it in, in a dining room, you open it up at the table. Oh, very spectacular. So yeah, we, well, I've, I've done those in fine dining restaurants before and they're always the most popular dish. Mm. It's generally what I'll cook uh, if I don't want any mess either because you can just prepare them all up yep. like a parcel and then in the oven they go. 
No, no oven to clean. Yeah, no yeah. mess. To, oh, sometimes there is. Depends how tightly you seal them. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you come up? This is a pretty unique recipe. Where do you come up with these? Look, some I get uh, from books. I've got quite a lot of old and new books on preserve making and jam making. Yep. Um, and uh, I'll experiment with different, um, you know, just a few different ingredients, changing the, the complexity. Yep. Um, try it out on the family. We try to use as much local produce as we can, because that's the idea of, you know, a sustainable life, which is what we've tried to live up here. Yeah, and so you've got a pretty strong community up here then? Oh, very strong, yeah, yep. yes. Lots of, uh, lots of friends have, um, have orchards or you know, grow vegetables that they have a big surplus. So that's where I get produce that we don't grow. It's not that <laughs> sad a story. Onions, it's not you? that sad a story. I'm just, <laughs> are these from your house, are they, these onions? These seem oh. quite, quite pungent, these ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I grew them especially for you. Yeah. How fond you are of, cooking, of cutting onions. So is it important to peel these even though we're cooking it for a long time or? Yes, we do need to peel it. Um, I just thought I'd ask. To peel it oh really? You reckon it'll come off? I think so, most of it does. When it's very fresh, it peels more easily. I'll pretend this is working a lot better than it is. Oh will you? No, no, it's working <laughs> okay. I love ginger though. You can already smell so that do coming I. out. Oh. Yes. So this has got friend. sort of savoury and sweet. Yes. Ingredients yeah. in it. So, what yeah. would you like? Any good chutney? It's a bit of, it's a bit of both. And what would you recommend serving this with? Things it's got um, both well, sort of aspects. In sandwiches. Yeah. Um, as a, a side, you know, a side condiment with uh, hot or cold meats. It would be nice in, um, in if you add some flavour to gravy. I think. Don't it? Oh, really? Yeah. Why not? Sometimes people put, of it? Sometimes people put Vegemite in to do that. By people, I mean myself. Yes. Um, I often use quince paste because I have, you know, make so much of it, and I have sometimes, if we've been to a market and you've put tastings out and you've got yep. a little bit of it left over, it goes in the fridge and then it goes into the gravy. It's really nice. I'm sure there's a lot of jealous people out there when you're talking about your excess of quince paste. <laughs> How finely chopped do you want me to? Uh, a bit more. Yeah, a yeah, little, little cool. bit finer than that. I no think. worries, yeah. cool. I wonder what you're doing it. Yeah? Because <laughs> that's something I'm not good at. Oh, a bit of pressure now, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, do your chef's bit. Nah, well, generally with this I would have um, grated it. But yeah, that's a bit too fine. Yeah, that well, looks be. lovely. And you're going to beat me if I don't do my last apple. Yeah, better get a move on. Mm, pressure's on. <laughs> Even though you stole my peeler back. <laughs> oh, my last apple's not a very good one. Oh no, here we go. You're going to throw it on the rubbish heap just to take the title. <laughs> <laughs> so what are these spices you've got up the front again? Well, this is curry powder here. Okay. Um, an Indian Madras curry powder, but you can use any curry powder. That's three tablespoons, because um, I like to make a fairly spicy chutney. But it's, it's a bit of um, trial and error as to how spicy you make these things. So is this fine enough now? Oh yes, that's lovely. Yep. Okay, why don't we want to uh, have it too big or too small? Um, a lot of people wouldn't like to bite into a great big piece of ginger. <laughs> oh, so it'll still retain its flavour oh, it even after the cooking? it will retain its flavour, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the sort of um, product that does. Now, I would probably, you weren't here, have thrown <laughs> the onion and the ginger into my food processor and uh, done it quickly. Ah, uh -huh, really? <laughs> yes, but I wanted to make you do it though. Oh, Should fair enough. <laughs> I need the work anyway. Yeah. Okay, that's done. You put the spices in. That so will that cook down. It looks very full, but it will cook down. But is this two different spices? I can see it's two, two colours. It's two different curry powders because that's what I had in the Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now we add uh, the litre of vinegar. vinegar. And, and we cook that gently for about 30 minutes. Then we throw in the sugar. Cook it for about another thirty. And how minutes. much sugar was that again? That's a kilo. Okay, beautiful, but nice and easy. But this will make probably twenty jars of chutney. So it's not so probably no. probably made more than we need for the show. I Just put so. me to work. Yeah, but you can take some home. <laughs> oh great. So this has been cooking for half an hour now. What's next? Yes, next we add the sugar. And I forgot to tell you before that we do put two tablespoons of salt in the whole mixture, so okay. we put that in as well. Won't and matter that we put it in a bit later? No, it doesn't matter. 
And now that cooks for about another three quarters of an hour um, till it's nice and thick and saucy. So um, we have made some earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. Yes. <laughs> if you'd like to try that, just Beautiful. put some into the dish and uh, on a piece of biscuit. What do you like to have this with? I like it with sausages. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. a bit like HP sauce. Yes, sort of. it's a bit like that. All right, so have a taste test. See if you approve. Mm. It's beautiful. It's quite tart, a little bit as well. Yeah. A little bit yeah. of sourness there. You don't want things too sweet. No, it's absolutely beautiful, full of flavour. Well, thanks for showing us just how easy it is to make a beautiful chutney at home. It's a pleasure, Ken. But stick around, guys, because I'm going to go find my uncle Simon and uh, he's going to show us how to make some beautiful apple cider at home. Catch you after the break. Thank you.